Welcome back to Talk Back. We are with the one and only Javed Akhtar. Javed Saab, the Muslims for Secular Democracy. Now, this is what it says on your website for the MFSD. It is not possible to fight Hindu communalism without fighting against Muslim communalism, nor is it possible to fight Muslim communalism without fighting against Hindu communalism, because the different communalisms feed on each other. Please explain. You know, hate breeds hate. And uh, you cannot fight hate with hate. If you want to curb hate, you have to fight your own hate within yourself also. It's as simple as that. But this is another question which was posed to you. Let's, let's stick on the, on the you, and you have, I know you've drawn a line between what is secular and what is non-secular. And you don't say that the opposite of religious is secular. You say that the opposite of religious is atheism. The opposite of secular is fascism. Well, Undemocratic or, behavior. Yeah, very right. Right? Very so right. that's what, it, at least that's what it's very explained right. on your very website. Right. Very right. So what should, this was a question which was posed to you, and the question was in the Times of India, what should ordinary Muslims do? And you responded, you said there's really, they're really in an unenviable position. All they can do is really hope to survive in places like Gujarat. Muslims must understand that though many have been butchered in Gujarat, this is not a Hindu-Muslim problem. This, they must understand that it is a clash of secularism and democracy versus fascism and intolerance. They have to improve their lot by lending strength to secular forces and by becoming more secular themselves. Now, this is quite a choice. Indian Muslims today are facing, isn't it? Yeah. Why? Or well, anybody, any secular person, has the same choice, whether that secular person is a Muslim or a Hindu. But many people would say that it is because they were facing such a choice that's it, that they opted for Pakistan. Many people confuse secularism. No, you, are putting, you are putting the cart before the horse. They asked for Pakistan because they were communal. Some people would you say. Are saying some people are, would say they asked for Pakistan because they wanted religious autonomy. Religious autonomy. We have more religious autonomy than any Muslim country in the world. As a matter of fact, name one Muslim country where all the sects of Muslim can practice their religion the way they want to do it. Can Qadianis do or Ahmadiyyas do that in your country? Can Shi uh, Sunnis can do it in Iran? No, it's not possible. This is the only country in the world, I repeat, where Muslims have total religious freedom, including Pakistan. Then how do you explain acts like Godra? That is not religious uh, uh, persecution. I mean, it's a common, this is the problem. Let us not confuse religion with communism. There are fascistic organizations like RSS or VHP or Bajrang Dal, and they are like, uh, Ku Klux Klan, and they have been very aggressive towards minorities, not only Muslim, but Christians too. But people who are fighting against them are not only Muslim, as a matter of fact, much more than Muslim. They are Hindus who are fighting with them. You also, and this is very interesting as well, you just mentioned the RSS. You've also put the RSS and the Muslim League on the same platform. You've, both, you've said that both were no, collaborators. You've said both were collaborators of the British Empire. Yes, I did. I will tell you what. You want to expand on that? Can you name one Muslim League? Uh, because I know. RSS was formed in 1925. And India got independence in 1947. In 22 years, not one RSS leader was behind the bars for a day. Is that a yardstick? No, no, yes, yes, because it means they never protested against British imperialism. On the other hand, no Muslim League leader was arrested for five hours. Never. Never. A Not only of, that, I'll of, tell you. A lot of when, Muslim leaguers would say that that's because they were more constitutional. They were, they were more constitutional against the imperialism. They but were constitutionalists. Whose constitution? They were following British's constitution. Wonderful. Again, in 1942, when Gandhi gave call of quit India, there were only two organizations in the subcontinent who opposed that. One was RSS, another was Muslim League. And there's the so comeback there's tremendous that. similarity the, between the two. And the comeback was that was because Jinnah Saab was perhaps uncomfortable with the use of religious symbolism used by Gandhiji. So he made a religious country. How wonderful. <laughs> A religious country or a theocracy? That's two different things. Well, it's a theocracy. 
You call it an Islamic country, don't you? It's supposed to be Islamic Republic. Fine. So you were against Gandhi's secular religious uh, practices, and to oppose that, you made a country which is theocratic. All right. Well, speaking of theocracy, you've also said that Pakistan is a laboratory for Hindutva. Very right. How so? Because what do they want to do? RSS people, they are the mirror image of Muslim League. Muslim League wanted a country for Muslims. They want a country for Hindus. And they want everybody else to be the second great citizen in this country, RSS. It is the mirror image of Pakistan. That is what they want to do, what has been achieved. It's if it is an achievement in it's Pakistan. It's a rather simplistic view. No, not at all. Not at all. You have a theocratic country. They also want to make a theocratic country. Ultimately, their goal, Godra, the is RSS to them. also called for wiping out minorities, sir. You don't Pakistan have Pakistan has never left. called for that. No, no Muslim it? League or no one in Pakistan has ever called for that. As a matter of fact, you have to have a minority to say that. Do you know that? Uh, although whoever is left is also treated like that. We know about it. There's a place called Shantinagar near uh, Lahore. You must find out a few years back what had happened there. I mean, how uh, any Christian who owns good land can be told that he has said blasphemous things and can be hanged or put it behind the jail. It's a common thing. As far as the Hindus are concerned there, how many Hindus you have? At the time of partition, you had 10% Hindus. Now they are not even one person. So to be unjust with minorities, you have to have some minorities left. But how can you, how can you coming back to communalism, how can you say that a problem which many say, and not, this is not just many in Pakistan, many across the world, say which is rampant in India, that there is some sort of Hindu right wing. Of course. That there is some sort of Hindu I right wing. Name, how can you hide, hide behind fa the, the am... label of fascism? and just call it a, a religious is, communalism and not what it I is, a you, war of religions. No, it's not a war of religions at all. They are, Savarkar, who started, coined this word Hindutva, he was a self-proclaimed atheist. Jinnah, you know better how religious he was. So let us not confuse religion with communalism. Okay, well, this is your, this is on, on calling Pakistan 